it's Stephanie and I'm here today with a tag that I am surprised I haven't done yet. This is the Unpopular Opinions book tag, which is probably my favorite tag to watch on booktube. So let's get to it. What's a book you don't like but everyone else loves? I have three books for this answer. The first one is my go-to answer whenever I film a tag video that has a question similar to this. And that is Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer. It's pretentious, emotionally manipulative, and just really highlights everything I hate about child narrators. Just, I couldn't stand it. The next one isn't a book I hated, it's just a book I didn't understand what all the hype was about. I'm gonna be real. I didn't love All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Um, I don't know if it was like the two child narrators, if I'm just really over World War II fiction, but there was nothing memorable to me about this book. Like I, we picked this for my book club probably at like the very peak of its height. Yeah, I still don't get it guys. I don't get it. And my third pick is She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb. I hated this book. Um, it's a coming of age story and it follows a fat protagonist named Dolores and it seemed really promising. It falls into that category that we'll talk about later of tragedy porn where you just take a character and you just put them through the ringer and you just throw every horrible thing that could possibly happen to them at them. I don't know if that's an attempt to like emotionally engage the reader but I feel like if so much stuff happens to this person eventually I'm just gonna become numb to it and I'm like oh what kind of torture is Dolores gonna go through this chapter? It just I, I hated it. I hate that whole genre you can have it on the flip side what's a book everyone dislikes but you love three answers again first one is a book that i feel like last time i checked had really low ratings on goodreads and that is swamplandia by karen russell i don't get it guys this is a coming of age story it follows three siblings that grew up in like the swamplands of florida it's fantastic i love it we follow the three siblings they get their own coming of age story it has this very dark fabulous element. It is very bleak. I mean, it's not the most happy and hopeful coming of age story, but I guess I don't need that from my stories. I thought this was great and very well done. My next one also has really low ratings on Goodreads and it kind of has a lot of those same elements. It has fabulous elements, but the story itself is pretty bleak. And that is The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender. I really enjoyed this novel. I loved the writing. I loved how she appealed to the senses and the sense of taste. And this is about a girl who realizes that when she takes a bite out of food, she can taste the emotion of whoever prepared that food. And I thought she did a really great job of exploring all the implications of that, not making it just light, whimsical, and fluffy. Like there was substance to it and I thought it was great. And here we go for number three. I'm sorry, I know this is a polarizing book and I get it. I get that you don't like the gimmickiness of it. Maybe you didn't like the mystery, but this was a book that I wanted to crawl into. I wanted to live in a world where Stanislas Cordova made movies and there was a whole underground subculture around it. I loved it. And uh, there was also parts where I was reading this book and I was really into it. And then my cat jumped on my lap and it gave me a heart attack. So this book actually did give me the same kind of stuff I love about horror novels. It did both for me. It was a thriller. It was a mystery. It was horror. And I felt like the extra elements of it made it a really immersive read for me. So yeah, I don't care. I liked it. A love triangle you weren't happy with. I don't read a lot of books with love triangles because I tend to stay away from books that headline romance as a main plot component. Uh, but I do have an answer for this and it's like water for chocolate. So there's a love triangle in this and Tita, Honey, you can do so much better than Pedro. Pedro is the worst. I don't understand his appeal. He's a trash human being. He marries your sister so that he can be close to you. Yeah, right, stop it. There was another option that made so much sense and was so much better. And I get maybe you didn't have like the passionate feeling about him, but not worth it. Pedro was trash. A popular genre you hardly reach for. High fantasy I don't reach for because I have a really hard time keeping world building straight and keeping like different races of people and like their own different quirks and like what's different about this world versus another world like too many details overwhelm me and I know for some people that really helps them get immersed in the story and really get into this world and that is the complete opposite for me it really takes me out and I'm trying to keep track of all these details 
and it's not great not great for me so it's just not a fit i can't do high fantasy a popular or beloved character that you don't like why do we love curious george he is obnoxious and he ruins everything and i don't understand why people keep trusting him with things that a monkey obviously shouldn't be trusted with i feel like it's common sense but there's a whole series so people keep on doing this and i don't get it the man in the yellow hat, he's like never, I feel like, adequately mad about the kind of trouble that Curious George gets into, and I find that a little disappointing. Popular author you just can't seem to get into, and I do have an answer for this. That for me is Neil Gaiman. Ugh, I really want to get into him because he has this kind of like dark, mythological, fabulous, you know, way of storytelling, but it's just not for me. I've really tried. I made it through the ocean at the end of the lane, I think, because I did it on audiobook. And I don't know what it is about his writing, if it's like, I don't know if it's fair to say that it's too simplistic. I just can't get into the kind of stories that he writes. I just, I've tried so many books. I feel like we just don't get along. And another author that's probably gonna be a little bit of a shocker because I've never talked about it before is Leanne Moriarty. I've really tried. I think I've picked up all of her books and I have made it one chapter into all of her books. I don't like the voice that she uses when she writes this like snarky mom blog type of book. Like I don't, I don't like people like that. I don't want to read about people like that. Um, I really did enjoy the HBO miniseries Big Little Lies. Loved it. But I just, I couldn't read the book. I, I've made it a chapter, I think, into every book she's ever written and have had to put it down. It's just not for me. <laughs> a trope you're tired of seeing. Um, I mentioned it, I think, in my first answer <laughs> was just tragedy porn. Like, I'm never going to pick up books like A Little Life or books that have that, where it's just putting characters through the ringer of life and there's just no hope. And it just seems like really over the top. It's not even really like a realistic amount of things that are happening to people. A series you have no interest in reading. So this is a series because of my two issues I have. One is that if I see an adaptation, I can't read the book because I can't get the movie or the show out of my mind when I read it. I have a really hard time. I have to go into a book with like a blank slate and because it's high fantasy. So I am probably never going to read A Song of Ice and Fire. I know that really disappoints my husband, but I'm sorry, it's just not, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> That's a case where the movie was better than the book. I feel like there's a lot of, there's not too many cases where I feel like it was better. There's times where I love them both equally. I guess one where maybe it was done a little bit better was Judith Guest's Ordinary People. I thought Mary Tyler Moore did a great job as the dramatic role of the mother in that movie. I also think I might like the movie Practical Magic a little more than the novel. Anyway guys, those are my unpopular opinions. Um, to tag people, this tag has been around forever. So if you haven't done this tag, I would love to see your unpopular opinions because they are my favorite things in the world. And uh, talk to me in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. Don't be hateful. That's what I have for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.